why aren't we consistent? It's like, I want to be consistent. I want to show up for people. I want to show up for myself. I want to hit the gym every day. I want to go ahead and be the best partner possible. I want to go ahead and get this book done, whatever it is. It kind of doesn't matter, whatever that thing is for you. And it might be like, yeah, and I know for some reason I'm really motivated and suddenly I'm not. Now there's psychological things to it. There's um, different ways that our brains work, right? So there's no blanket thing where I can say, this is how you stay motivated. If someone's saying, this is the ultimate key to motivation that works for everybody, then don't believe them because people are motivated in different ways. People are motivated by different things. What motivates you isn't gonna motivate me and vice versa. So I think it's important to get it out of the idea of motivation and more like what is the block that's preventing you from being a little bit more consistent in these things that, you know, if you have a painful feeling around it, you must really want to do them. And I found that there's there's two major ways that uh, we, we uh, two major reasons why we aren't consistent. The first one, and I kind of uh, implied this early on in, in, uh, in our conversation, is that we take on too much. And we say we're going to do this and it's this big ideal pie in the sky um there's a scientific f term for it that i used to hear a lot when i was younger and i'm not going to quite get it right but basically saying in ideal circumstances this is what's possible if you frame it like that and you're adulting like i am then you can quickly realize that whatever goal you're going after and how you're trying to be consistent might not work because if you're an adult, even if you're a kid, your circumstances are rarely going to be ideal. Now, if you're in a quote unquote good environment and you have a certain, you're in a certain bubble because you're a kid and you got a, a safe, emotionally safe, physically safe household and all that stuff, then you're going to be, you know, uncomfortable sometimes, but you're going to, you're going to have way more elbow room and chances are you're going to be in that ideal environment more. But if you have people dependent on you, if you are an adult, if you have to make money for a living, if you have to take care of your housing and your health insurance on stuff, there's way too many dynamics to be in that ideal situation all the time. I have a friend that has uh, way more kids than I do. I want to say they have five, maybe six kids now, which, you know, already making me get more gray hair here. Just thinking about that. Blessings to the kids that I have. And this wonderful thing that they said a while ago was that they don't wait for the perfect day because with, let's just say six, with six kids, odds are very strong <laughs> that one of the kids was going to be having a bad day or a bad moment in any day of the week. And the odds are a little bit less, but chances are that two of the kids are going to be having a bad day. So odds are two out of six, one out of three. And me having kids, they, those things are probably related because one probably did something to the other or vice versa. I digress. Again, if, you, if you're a parent, you understand what I'm trying to say. And so the thing is, is that how can I have an amazing day or create these things that have the, the uh, elasticity, the pivoting, as the comment said earlier, the pivoting, the elasticity, the flexibility, when, just when, and it's not being negative, when something doesn't go as planned. It doesn't have to be something that's bad. Just something doesn't go as planned. As we go into adulthood and further into adulthood, I'm middle aged now. Then that more, the stuff we don't have on our control actually expands. Probably because there's more that we are responsible that we have and more people that are dependent of us un until we reach older age. With that in mind, whatever you consider to be consistent about whatever your goal is i'm going to show up and do this thing every day well that's under ideal circumstances when a circumstance that you don't foresee happens that is not ideal and it could be good or bad whatever there's plenty of lottery winners that are miserable so i'm not trying to put good or bad on it it's just something that you are not expected that changes the circumstance once that changes are you going to be flexible enough to rock or move to that direction that's better. With the higher goals or with the um, uh, taking on too much, however you wanna frame it, some of that comes from not wanting to let other people down. And that's where the communication part comes in because sometimes you're trying to be consistent on this level and then you talk to you know your partner or your 
business wise or romantically or whatever, or you talk to your boss, you know, and you're up here, and you're, and you're burning yourself trying to get up here and you talk to them. And then in reality, you could be here and it'll be fine. Or which has happened to me multiple times. I'm thinking whatever it is I'm, I'm being consistent about, it's high priority, high priority. And I talk to whomever it is or the organization, and it's not even a priority for them. But this other thing over here is a priority. And they'd rather I try to be consistent about that than this thing over here that I've ballooned well beyond what, what, what they actually needed. And frankly, what my resources are. And so once you get into the flow of that, you realize where you might be taking on too much. And of course that requires sometimes having uncomfortable conversations when the expectations of you are higher than what you're actually able to deliver consistently. The good part about it, there you go. Yeah, you have to make sure that those expectations meet. Thank you. And so the hard part about it or the important part is to have that self-honesty to know when you're in over your head. So that first part, when we're not consistent, it often can be because we're taking on too much. We're doing too much. Like it's, we're pushing it because we want to, as I say, people please somebody else, or we're, we haven't had that conversation and actually realize that we actually didn't have to perform at this level beyond our particular resources. The second thing, which I have mentioned, is that we often do not think long-term about it. And some of that happens because we're not thinking long-term and it's just, we didn't think about the next week or the next month. Um, a lot of the material that I do, even the business coaching that I do is geared towards that. It's kind of helping you uh, even grab my books, whatever. It's helping you ideally push out a little bit further and say, oh yeah, yeah, this is, um, I can go further than this. There's more insight here than just today. And I don't have to hustle or I shouldn't hustle as hard this moment because I'm going to be hustling every day <laughs> until I decide to get into another business or until I decided this project is done. That's a long time. And so once you put it like that, it's like, maybe, maybe it is more of a marathon than a sprint. Maybe I need to calm down a little bit. And that will naturally, naturally lower your expectations as far as what you can be consistent with, which is really important. And the other thing, as I mentioned earlier, is that you have to think about whatever you're doing, how is it going to impact you three months from now, a year from now, even five years from now? I started this show three and a half years ago. There's certain decisions, as I mentioned at the top of the show, there's certain decisions that impacted my health, my, my well-being, my connection to my family, my ability to do other work. I had written three books during the period of time in the past three and a half years since I've had the show. So I'm doing these other things. I'm working with clients such as yourself and all that. If I had said, I'm going to be consistent again, doing five episodes a week. Yeah, I would have like 2000 episodes by now, but at what state would I be in? Maybe those books wouldn't have happened. Maybe I wouldn't be as available for you as a business coach one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe some of the keynotes and other things that I was able to make a, a bigger impact with, maybe they never want to happen. So the key thing is to figure out, number one, if we're taking on too much and why. It's important to know the why for that one. It could be people pleasing. It could be because we don't want to admit that we're overwhelmed, right? Whatever the reason, you kind of have to get to the bottom of it to, to, to be in a better place. The second part is that we often are consistent because we're not thinking long term and we're thinking just in the next week or we get really excited and we're like, yeah, we're going to go and do this every single day, as I did when I began the show three and a half years ago. And thankfully, I calmed myself down. And as I talked to mentors and other folks later, they were like, yeah, that's a great idea. Maybe you can do the episodes a couple times a week or once a week. There's some folks I know that do a podcast episode, shout out to y'all, like once a month. But to have the quality that they want to have, and if it's their lifestyle, they do once a month. And they do really good work. So, I mean, it works for them. As long as it works for the people that you're trying to support, then that's all that matters. If you want more insight, a really good place to start is The Infinite Game by Simon Sinek. Shout out to Simon. Um, the short version of it is that there are finite games and infinite games. 
a finite game would be like American football. There's four quarters, there's a certain amount of points, um, but particularly once we get to the end of the quarter, then, I'm sorry, once we get to the end of the four quarters, the last quarter, then whoever has the most points wins. If no one has the, if they're equal, as far as there's a tie, then they go into overtime, double overtime until someone finally has one team has finally more points. That's a finite game. And everybody, you know, gets about the stands, takes their hot dogs and go goes home. And then the next football game is the next week, but it's a totally different matchup, right? Infinite games are games that are forever. Uh, being married is an infinite game until you're not married anymore. Because you can win an argument. <laughs> Trust me, I've been on both sides of that. You can win an argument, but then you're still sleeping next to that person. And you're still making breakfast or having breakfast made with that person the next day. And the day after that. And the day after that. You can see why I'm talking about this in our consistency episode. Because, <laughs> like, you can go ahead and, as, as the saying goes, like, yeah, they won the battle, but they're about to lose the war. And so, even to get sharper with that point, there's certain games where there are no winners. Your job is to just coexist. Same thing with, um, I've uh, launched two startups and I'm selling the second one. For the second startup, I had two other co-founders. Our job wasn't to be the better co-founder or the best to other people. Our job was to, frankly, survive having one of the most popular apps at the time, Cuddler, almost 10 years ago. Our job was to survive and make sure that the app, and more importantly, the community, we had about a quarter million users, those users thrived. Our job wasn't against each other. That's an infinite game until we sold the app. We sold the business. But it was an infinite game until that. He breaks that down way more eloquently than I can. And it's a fantastic book. It's actually inspired by um, a previous book by a scientist called uh, Finite Games and Infinite Games, or it might be Infinite Games and Finite Games. Um, I believe it's linked somewhere in there, even if you go to the, the page for it. Uh, the Infinite Game. I think he gives a shout out and talks about the original book. Worth checking out the original book too, but of course, doesn't necessarily have the modern Simon Sinek, you know, flair when it comes to that. But definitely go ahead and check out both books. Another book that will work really well in understanding this, uh, similar book called The Long Game by Dory Clark. Shout out to Dory. She actually interviewed me for her Newsweek show a couple years ago. You can actually check it out for free at bringyourworth.tv. But I've known Dory for a little while. I've always admired her work. Hope you're doing wonderful, Dory. Her book is fantastic. And it talks about less about the uh, business strategic part of, of that infinite game, which is more Simon's area. And she addresses that, but I found it's more interesting on the relationship part of it. Not intimate relationships, but just literally your relationship with your customer, how you treat them, how you're building up trust over time. You'll notice there's certain words I keep using during this episode about consistency, and it's uh, trust, it's relationships, it's commitment. All those different things play into consistency. Consistency builds trust. I think that's the main argument with Dory's book. Consistency builds trust. And on trust, all these other things can be built. Your business can, and I would argue should be built on that. Um, your livelihood, as far as bringing money in, is built on that. Um, your recurring customers, your um, 1,000 true fans, as Kevin Kelly would say, I have a video on that too, if you wanna to go to bringyourwork.tv. As Kevin Kelly would say, the 1,000 true fans, those folks that will support you no matter what and want to contribute to your work. That all comes from consistency. That's what this book is about. Again, fantastic book, be sure and check it out. If you wanna go a little bit deeper as far as why you might not be consistent with things or where those blocks are, be sure and check out a recent episode, How to Know Yourself More, A Beginner's Guide. And it's a few major concepts, including that recent live about your shadow, as far as you getting the tools you need to know yourself better. And as many, many folks have said, have said psychologists, sociologists, even armchair folks like myself, if you don't know yourself, then you don't know how you're gonna show up. If you don't know how you're gonna show up, it's really hard to build trust because other folks don't know which one of you is going to appear. And that's real talk. 
hell, you might not even know which one of you is going to appear. Because once we're out of those ideal situations or things get weird or wacky or you get uncomfortable, then stuff might come up. And suddenly you can't be consistent because you're busy dealing with your own baggage or drama. That's not a judgment against you. We all have it. Literally all of us have that. The question is, how are you going to process that? You know, you see my shirt, get you a therapist, whatever works for you. You go ahead and you process that. And then you're able to go ahead and show for people more and be consistent, which I think is so important. Thank you. Right. And it's so important to the process. You know, no pun intended with the ideal process, but we all have to go through our process. One last recommendation when it comes to being more consistent is Simon Sinek. Gar- Simon Sinek, if I can say this right. Simon Sinek's guaranteed secret to success most of us won't do. And it was based on an Inc. Magazine column I had a few years ago. Shout out to Inc. Magazine. And uh, talking about consistency. And he has a killer quote in there. It was enough for me to do a 10 minute video about. I'm not even going to spoil the quote. Check out the video. It's one of my favorites. And I think you guys might enjoy that. So again, you're watching the Bring Your Worst Show. I'm entrepreneurial coach, Damon Brown. I'm here at your service as a side hustler, solopreneur, otherwise a non-traditional entrepreneur. Happy to support. Bring Your Worst Show is every Wednesday at 1.11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time. You can subscribe for free. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, if you're not showing up regularly and there's stuff that comes up, then suddenly you might not be consistent anymore. And that's a rough place to be. I know all of us want to be consistent. So I want to go and help on that journey.